Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are going to be going over these two main scout vehicles that are obviously going to be coming when Phase 1 actually fully releases on consoles and the main uh, version of the game on PC. So, what we're going to do is, now that we've driven these vehicles extensively in campaign scenarios, we've never actually sort of pitted them head-to-head -head against each other, and that is what we're going to be doing today on this testing ground map. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build them fully. I'm going to take each one into the garage, build it up fully as you are able to in the game, and then I'm going to take them through a series of obstacles and series of challenges and see which one does better and see which one you would probably be better, um, sort of like, which one will be more advantageous to use on the daily in a campaign scenario. So we have the Ford F-750 on the left, we have the TUZ Acteon on the right, and obviously there are some differences between the two that we will get to, in, especially in terms of hauling capacity, but with all that being said, that's kind of, you know, secondary. We're going to go ahead and start with the F-750. We're going to fully build it, and I think we're going to spend a little bit more time in the in the TUZ Acteon than we are in the F-750, just because of the simple fact that the Acteon is, the Acteon is something we haven't spent quite as much time with. Now, here we are in the F-750, so Right off the bat, we're going to go ahead and go for the top engine, which really, I mean, at the end of the day, is not that much better. I mean, it says respectable power. Uh, as you guys know from my streams and from all the campaign scenarios we've seen, there's not much uh, there for respectable power. The TUZ is definitely faster. We're going to go with the tuned custom suspension, which does allow you to fit up to a 45-inch tire, which, make no mistake, is a lot of tire. I mean, it's a genuinely large tire, and the tire size is good. The tire size is really good for this truck. Now, I'm going to go for a autonomous scout winch. And frame on on wise, this is where it gets a little weird, and a lot of people have a problem with that odd gap between the bed and the cab, but I'm going to, I think, go with, for the for the objectives of this test, I'm going to throw a flatbed on it for utility purposes, and I'm also going to throw a utility mount on it, because the TUZ is definitely more of a utility rig, and so I'm kind of building this to sort of go up against that. So I'm going to go with the tallest snorkel I can fit, engageable all-wheel drive, and obviously the diff lock is always on, so we don't need to worry about that. Now, exhaust-wise, I'm going to actually probably throw the outrolled exhaust on it this time. I don't really use it very often, but it's kind of cool. And let's go ahead and we'll stick with the factory parking lights and we'll throw the straight cap sun visor on it. Rooftop-wise, uh, we'll do the roof fogs and we'll throw a hunter bumper on there. And, well, actually, no. We're going to throw a stock one on there to kind of help with approach angle a little bit. Then, well, actually, we have one wheel option, and that's about all we get. So, I'm going to actually just paint it red, just basic red, uh, nothing much to worry about there. So, our F750 is fully built and ready to go. Now, again, we have a series of obstacles and challenges that we're going to be taking these things through. And since we're doing it in an objective-based manner, I'm actually going to load one unit of cargo onto the flatbed of both vehicles. And part of our objective is going to be keeping that cargo on the back. For both of these trucks, it's going to be one unit of consumables. Now, we're going to go ahead and shut this guy off and swap over to the TUZ Acteon, and we're going to go ahead and build it. And as you can tell, my god, it's already so much faster. Even with, like, even with the stock engine. Now we're going to go ahead and throw the IMZ 6210 in it. And it's, I mean, after that, it's really dang good. So, the balanced gearbox, we have a high-range gearbox. We also have a off-road gearbox option. I am... Uh, I don't know. I'm going to throw the off-road gearbox in it. Because I think that'll be as close as we might be able to get. I don't know. So, you can go up to a 47 on the TUZ Acteon which is a good bit bigger than you can go on the on the Ford. Now, this thing can can also use a true mud tire. It can use a true mud tire like a Tega tire, but for our purposes, we're going to be using a 47-inch UOD3. And the reason why we're going to be doing that is because I don't want to go full mud tire because I feel like it would be a little bit unfair to the Ford. Now, I'm going to go with the autonomous medium, spare wheel, and... Uh, 
spare wheel, please. Engageable diff lock already engaged. And we're going to go with the oh, small sideboard bed. That's about all you get. And tall front facing snorkel. Now, as far as little add-ons go, I do love the little spotlight up there on top. That's really, really cool. Um, fenders, I'm not going to worry about putting them on. And then the hunter bumper eh, probably wouldn't hurt our, uh, our approach angle too much. Let's see. They all come out fairly far. I think I'm going to use the crossbar with fogs. I feel like that's probably going to be the lesser of, of those evils. I'm going to use... Ooh, I'm going to use those. Those look really, really good. And paint-wise, I think I'm going to paint this one... I eh, might as well paint it blue. The other one's red. Might as well be a red versus blue challenge. So now, we're going to load one unit of consumables into the back of the Acteon. Now, right off the bat, the TUZ actually has a big advantage because it's got sideboards it's you're not dealing with a you know a generic uh flatbed and when you're not dealing with a generic flatbed you have the advantage of basically not having to worry anywhere near as much about things falling off so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna encourage the ford to follow me via the winch and here hook that boy up and let's get out of here so i'm gonna actually just encourage the ford to follow me to our next location and what we're going to do is we're going to end up making a right and we're going to head towards the hill climb portion of this test. Now, we're not going to be going straight up the side of a mountain or anything like that. We're going to be doing a somewhat, I would say, somewhat, a somewhat uh, civilized challenge in terms of hill climbing. But I'm not going to worry too much about the water portion. I mean, I feel like it's going to be the way it's going to be. You know, it's not going to be some sort of difficult obstacle for either truck so i'm just going to encourage the ford to follow me through it and then our actual tests will start after this now i do have a feeling that the tuz is definitely going to get it in terms of speed i mean we know that but to even that playing field a little bit i threw the off-road gearbox in the tuz because it dramatically overpowers the ford so let's go to some of the less dramatic hills down here and that's where we'll begin our hill climb testing now you can also sort of kind of go back and forth and say, well, which one, which one would you rather drive? Which one looks better? And I think at the end of the day, you know, looks are completely subjective in any sort of comparison. You know, appearance is a completely subjective thing. But I think that at the end of the day, I mean, it all comes down to whether you like the sort of, you know, more European style cab over trucks or, or if you prefer the more American style trucks. Now, here's the hill that we're going to use. And I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. And the hill we're going to use is the one right here that starts with this little notch and then has, you know, a little bit of a, kind of it goes over to the left and then has another hill. So we're going to go ahead and run the Acteon first and then we're going to run the F750 second. So three, two, one, go! I'm going to run this. We're going to run both of them in high, see how far they can go. Oh! Oh, recovery! No recovery. Oh, we lost the cargo. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, well. A little bit of a stiff suspension, and it definitely played into that, uh, played into that test a lot. So, because when we actually bounced up to one side, it actually forced us to bounce back the other way. The only problem with the, um, the F-750 is that it doesn't have enough power to pull this thing backwards and make it over a freaking pebble. Look, it's pulling it towards me! This truck is literally the weakest freaking thing on the face of the earth in this game. It's literally the weak... Like, you have to... You have to smash the, like, the winch onto something in order to get it to pull it. It is literally the weakest thing on the face of the earth. So, let's go ahead and run that same hill climb in the F750 now and see if it's actually got enough power to make it up the hill. I mean, I, ah, uh, I don't know if it will or not. Oh my god! I tried to do it in high and it was like, oh, a slight hill? Uh, no? Alright, let's see what you can do. High range is just not gonna happen here, apparently. Low plus could happen, though. 
The TUZ would have made it up and high. It had no problem if we hadn't, like, bounced it back and flipped it over. And I know there's going to be a bunch of people in the comments that are going to say I didn't give the TUZ a fair shot because I rolled it over because I'm a HORRIBLE DRIVER and I don't know how to play this game. But this thing... Come on. Come on, Ford. Dude, it barely had enough... It doesn't have enough power! I've been flat out this whole time and it just freezes. It straight up just freezes. Whereas the TUZ, the TUZ, TUZ goes up just fine. So, with that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and actually drop the cargo in this one. And... I remove the cargo. And now we're going to have another test. And I think... The next test is actually going to be... You know what the next test is going to be? We're going to hop back in the TUZ for this one. And repair and refuel. We're going to do a repair and refuel before the beginning of every single test. Just to sort of really even the playing fields. And this time, we're going to head for the dips. Now, you guys know that the dips are a obstacle that will really, really kind of overcome a lot of different vehicles for different reasons. Obviously, it's either approach angle, departure angle, or they get high centered. So, let's see how the little TUZ does. Lock the diffs, low plus, and let's go. Now, the short wheelbase is really going to help us here. I'm just a little concerned about that approach angle at the front and just basically having the front end dig into the ground. Now, somebody got very upset in the comment section of one of my other videos that I wasn't completely angling sideways over every one of these bumps or these ditches, and they were like, have you ever been off-road in your entire life? Anybody and everybody knows that you never go over straight. And I'm like, part of the actual test here is to see how far they can get going in a straight line before they high center themselves, which, wow, I expected it to be there. But we can angle a little bit, and that's fine, but a big part of it, like I said, is to see how far they can get without completely high centering themselves. Oh. And that might be it for that. Well, maybe not. It's digging, though. I mean, it is really, really, really digging. Oh, there we go. I'm trying to get, you know, I'm trying to get a good run at this guy, and it's... It's only sort of, it's only sort of playing into it. You know what I mean? Like it, oh, 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 we bent the bumper. Oh no, the bumper just flexes that much. That's kind of, that's kind of sad that the bumper has that much flex to it. Oh, come on. This thing has so much more torque though, it feels like, than the F750 does. Do not roll yourself over here. Bro, it's having a hard time. I've been trying to angle it and it's having a hard time. This one might actually be be better taken straight on because, yeah, because it's so, like, it's so long. And this thing doesn't even have a chance of high centering itself here. Up and over. One last dip to go. And the TUZ makes it through. Now, will it be the same story for the F750? find out on the next episode. No, we're actually going to go ahead and grab the F750 now and make sure it's fully repaired and refueled and good to go. And now we're going to launch it at the same dip obstacles. It's just such a weak truck and the horn sucks. <laughs> it's literally like a clown car horn. This one in particular is definitely going to be a high centering risk. We're going to have to angle dramatically to not high center everywhere in this thing. Come on. Oh, jeez. Make it back. Ow, ow. I, stop it. Stop it. Woo. Woo. There we go. It's moving. I mean, as long as we angle just enough, it moves. And it actually, we scraped frame a little bit back there, but it seemed to still be okay with it. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's something you have to do dramatically. Oh no. I don't think we did it enough. Well, 
Maybe if we can get a little bit of a pull from the front axle. There we go. Not too bad. It's... It's definitely, like, you have to think about it more, for sure. I mean, you have to be very in tune with what you're doing, but... Just let it rotate. Let it grab. The TUZ is definitely easier. I mean, compared to the TUZ, this feels like driving a school bus. But... It's not, again, it's not impossible, it's just difficult. And it's slow. It is so slow. Like, it'll get there, just don't expect, you know, two-day shipping. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you almost have to, like, snake your way up the entire dip section. And you have to make sure you always have at least one set of tires on the ground. Uh, like, if you don't, you will high center and you will get stuck almost immediately. Oh. So, with that being said and done and with that test behind us, I would definitely say, like, can they both make it? Sure. But, uh, I don't know if I would... See, functionally, every, every part of me wants to say that the TUZ is the better pick. But the part of me that just loves really cool retro trucks says the SF F750 is the better pick. So I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below which one is your favorite, which one you guys think is functionally better, and which one you guys would use in a campaign scenario. So if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed this test, hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe if you enjoyed. And if there are any other trucks that you would like to see sort of battle it out against each other, let me know. Leave your suggestions. And I'll see you guys in the next one.